Hi, everyone. So as my introduction said, graphene has been talked about as a wonder material now for 20 years. And from its Nobel Prize, there have been a huge number of headlines about the applications which it will be used for. So if you uh, apply graphene correctly, you can use it to make corrosion resistant paints. You can use it to make boats go faster through the water. You can turn your coats or your car into a heater. Uh, you can uh, distill amazing, great tasting vodka. You can even make condoms which last longer or space elevators. How cool is that? An elevator which can take you uh, to the moon. Now, why is that? Well, the reason for that really has a very strong scientific basis. Um, and so graphene is a uh, single layer thickness, hexagonal lattice structure. So that gives it really unique characteristics. It's very strong, stronger than steel. It's very conductive. It's also very thin. So it's a million times thinner than a single human hair. And it's very stretchy. You can do all of these amazing things. And as an example, we've just added 10 grams of graphene powder to a uh, to paint for a shipping container. And that 10 grams on that shipping container means that it's wrapped 500 times in graphene layers just from using 10 grams. So its properties really are quite remarkable. What an amazing product. However, the, the narrative has shifted over the last 20 years from, isn't this incredible, to why is this not really taking off? Why is it not really being mass adopted? Graphene has been on the cusp of mass adoption for a long time, but not really getting there. And why is that? And I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, today. And that's meant that the headlines have been a little bit more pessimistic. What graphene has lacked is, is the so what, is the that's incredible, but what does it really mean for me? Why should I really care about that? Um, and it's really stayed in the realm of, of academia, stayed in the realm of, uh, of small scale application. In short, graphene has been a solution looking for a problem. Now, things have changed, and that change really is uh, that graphene's found a problem to solve. Now, I studied um, climate change in university 20 years ago. Uh, I've spent my career uh, in the energy industry, primarily on decarbonization. And it was depressing 20 years ago, looking at the predictions as to what climate change would mean. It's even more upsetting now that we're living through an age of changes to our climate, changes to our, uh, our ecosystem. So how can graphene help to solve this problem? Well, I don't believe that changes and a solution will come through behavioral change alone. If people are asked to choose between growth, prosperity, and living increasingly amazing lives, or decarbonization, people have been shown, governments have been shown to choose short-term prosperity. So we need solutions which create prosperity, growth, innovation, and decarbonization at the same time. In fact, we've heard about at least three or four of them in the last hour, which is, which is really encouraging. And this is where graphene can really help as well. The key is taking those amazing graphene characteristics and applying them to the things which can help us to decarbonize. And um, I'm gonna give you a few examples of that. One of those examples is, is tires. So adding graphene to tires can help tires to, to last longer. If you take three grams of graphene and you add it to a six kilogram tire on your car, it makes that tire last up to 40% longer. And that's just from three grams. Not only do you have to make less tires, but when the tires are used, they give off less plastic pollution. They throw off less plastic onto the roads and so on. At the moment, we're in a position where the tire doesn't last as long as the car, right? You replace your tires as your car gets older. In the future, companies like Goodyear are making tires which will last for longer than cars. So you'd be putting old tires onto new cars because they are not the first part on a car to wear out. How exciting is, is that? 
So that's one example. Another one is batteries. And as we increasingly electrify our society, we're going to need more batteries which can move around in our pockets or in our transportation system. And we're going to need more batteries which can help balance the electricity grid. I've spent a long time in the energy industry. My team in a previous job helped big, build Europe's biggest 50 megawatt battery. And those batteries help to balance the electricity grid in a way that gas does today. So when you have solar and wind penetration, you need something to help balance the grid and batteries can play that role. But batteries have a lot of problems. They're expensive. They use a lot of lithium, for example, which is not that sustainable material. They uh, are limited in how much power they can take. And this is where graphene can help. So you can add graphene to batteries, and we're doing that today. And it makes those batteries last longer, charge faster, take up less space, and also give off less heat to make them more sustainable and more economically viable. And the third example is graphene in concrete and cement. We talked about, I think it was a 39% building contribution. I think 8% of the total is just from concrete and cement. So they are hugely carbon intensive. Again, you add graphene to concrete and cement, and it means that that uh, can become stronger per uh, unit of space. And so if you, if you half just that one area of concrete and cement, if you half its carbon footprint, you save 4% of, of global emissions. That's, that's pretty impressive. Also, if you take the steel rebar that's in those structures, if you need less of it, or if you coat that steel with graphene, it will last for longer. So I, I hope that brings to life three practical applications of where graphene can help us to decarbonize. So that sounds great, doesn't it? Well, the forward thinkers will already be thinking, where does the graphene come from? Is that sustainable in and of itself? And the reality at the moment is that most graphene is made by mining graphite rock, shipping it, exfoliating it, which means stripping off the layers of graphene and then turning it into a powder. That's not very clean and it has its own carbon footprint. However, there is another way of doing it. Um, and that's what we call the Lavidian process. Um, and at Lavidian, we take a really climate-centric approach to graphene production. Um, and we use what we call our loop system to make it happen. Now, loop at its core does three things. It takes in methane gas. So we're doing that from waste gas sources like landfill, sewage, or oil and gas flaring sites. It takes the CH4 molecules, it turns the carbon into the graphene, and it turns the uh, hydrogen molecules into hydrogen fuel. So those three things all have a climate benefit. You take harmful gas, you produce graphene, and you produce hydrogen at the same time. And what that allows us to do is to effectively turn the carbon into a graphene as a carbon sink. Now, what an amazing way of capturing carbon to use it for something productive rather than trying to turn it into carbon dioxide and pump it under the sea, for example. It also allows us to make graphene, which is built from the molecular level up. So it's always the same consistency. If you make it from graphite rock, an issue that you have is that each batch is slightly different because rock has naturally occurring variations within it. So that is a Lavidian view as to how graphene can help play a role in, in, in decarbonization. It's how you apply it and what you apply it to, but crucially, it's also how you make it. And this is not theoretical. So we are doing this today with a big water company in Manchester called United Utilities. We're taking their waste gas and turning it into hydrogen and graphene. And we're doing this today in the Middle East. In fact, our first loop unit arrived there this morning to go onto an oil and gas site to strip out the carbon from that facility. So this is not a future impact. This is happening today, which is one of the reasons why we're really excited about it. Um, so I was asked to, to finish with um, a bold prediction. Um, and as context, I mentioned earlier, I don't think the climate challenge will be solved through behavioral change alone. I think we need solutions which enable prosperity, growth, innovation, uh, and decarbonization at the same time. I think graphene has allowed us to find that solution. So I believe 
Graphene has found its killer application. I think that the way we make it and its penetration, you will see it in your uh, foam batteries, you'll see it in your car tires, you'll see it in the concrete and cement um, around the company, uh, around the country as we, as we grow. And crucially, I talked about a space elevator. Well, let's hope we need a space elevator because let's hope we make the world a nice enough, sustainable enough place to live that we'll want to stay here and enjoy it and not uh, go to the moon. Thank you.